As an Ethiopian, coffee is more than just a beverage. It's a cultural cornerstone. Ethiopia is celebrated as the birthplace of coffee, or bunna, as we call it. In Ethiopia, coffee is enjoyed three times a day during a ritual known as the coffee ceremony. This tradition begins with the host washing and roasting fresh coffee beans, releasing a rich aroma that the guests are invited to savor. Next, the coffee is brewed in a uniquely shaped pot called jebena. Finally, it is poured into small cups called sini and served. All the while, the sweet, calming scent of the burning incense fills the air. Beyond the sensory delight, these moments are also a stunning display of fluid motion. The swirling smoke from the roasting beans, the gentle steam rising from the jebana, and the curling trails of incense smoke all illustrate the intricate beauty and complexity of fluid dynamics. In this video, I aim to capture these mesmerizing flows by building a computational fluid dynamics simulation inspired by Yostam's seminal 2003 paper, Stable Fluids. We'll begin by exploring the physics fundamentals behind fluid flow, then delve into the necessary simplifications to create a functional simulation. Finally, we'll analyze the physical results by testing how various objects interact with airflow in our virtual wind tunnel. The Navier-Stokes equations are partial differential equations that model the motion of Newtonian fluids. Let's examine these equations more closely to understand their components. The first equation, the dot product of the gradient and velocity field u, states that the divergence of the velocity field u must be equal to zero. Divergence measures the net rate at which fluid flows out of or accumulates at a given point. According to the principle of mass conservation, this net rate must be zero, ensuring that mass is neither created nor destroyed within the flow. The second equation is a little bit longer, describing how the velocity field u changes over time. The first term highlighted, u dot product gradient times u, represents the convection of the fluid. This term accounts for how the fluid's velocity changes due to the motion of the fluid itself. To visualize this, imagine a fluid particle moving from point A to point B. As it travels, it carries its momentum and interacts with the surrounding fluid through inelastic collisions, reducing its velocity. Essentially, this term captures the nonlinear effect of fluid self-advection where the fluid motion at one point affects the flow in its vicinity. The second term highlighted, 1 over rho density times the gradient P, pressure, represents the effect of pressure gradients on the fluid. To visualize this, imagine a small cube of fluid. Varying pressures on its opposing faces generates a net force, causing motion. These pressure differences create forces that drive the fluid from regions of high pressure to low pressure. The third term highlighted, nu kinematic viscosity times the Laplacian of the velocity field u, represents the viscosity on the fluid. When most people hear the word viscosity, they think of how thick a fluid is, or how much it seems to resist flow. The common example given is honey, which has a much higher viscosity than that of water. A better way to think about viscosity is by imagining the fluid flows in layers. Each of these layers exerts some finite friction on each other, similar to how rubbing your hands together generates heat. This friction dampens differences in velocity, causing momentum to diffuse throughout the fluid. In highly viscous fluids, this diffusion happens faster, making the flow more uniform. For example, when pouring honey, its viscosity dampens velocity differences, so the fluid flows more smoothly and uniformly. In contrast, water with its lower viscosity allows for more swirling and larger variations in velocity as it flows, resulting in a less uniform velocity profile. 
This dampening effect of viscosity is what this term models mathematically. The fourth term highlighted, F, represents any external forces that act on the fluid. Some examples of this might include forces applied by stirring, which induce motion in the liquid, or the effect of gravity, which drives the flow when the liquid is poured. With the Navier-Stokes equations, we can now begin developing a computational method to simulate our fluids using each of these terms. First, we can add an external force F. We start by defining the force as the rate of change of velocity. We can then discretize this equation using the finite difference method. When we rearrange, we get the following equation. Next, we go back to the first term of the Navier-Stokes equation describing advection. To solve this, we will use a mathematical trick called the method of characteristics. We define A as a scalar quantity of interest, such as density or velocity, and V as the vector field. P of x0 and t represents the characteristics of the vector field. The full derivation of this equation is given in the paper in the description. The main point to take away, however, is that the scalar quantities do not vary along stream lines. From this point, the implementation is simple. To determine any component of the fluid's velocity at a desired point, we can trace a path which corresponds to the particle streamline between the current and previous location. The velocity at the current position is simply the velocity at its previous position minus delta t time ago. Then we can go to the third term of the Navier-Stokes equation, describing diffusion. To solve this, we simply discretize the diffusion equation using the finite difference method. After some rearranging, we get the following equation. We then need to discretize the Laplacian operator, using an iterative technique known as the Jacobi method. We divide our fluid into a grid as shown, with the following indices. A fluid property given as phi, like velocity, is simply a weighted average of its neighboring cells. This means that over time, the velocity profile will become uniform. Also note that as the viscosity increases, the rate at which the velocity profile dampens increases, as we predicted previously. Lastly, we look at the first Navier-Stokes equation, describing conservation of mass. To ensure that this condition is kept, we need to use a mathematical result called Helmholtz decomposition, which states that any vector field W can be uniquely decomposed into a divergence-free part U and gradient field Q. Our goal is to find a way to project our velocity field W into the divergence part U. In other words, our goal is to solve for U. To do this, we can take the gradient of both sides of the equation to get the following. Using the fact that U has no divergence, this part cancels, and we get the following Poisson equation for the scalar field Q. Now we have a projection operator from which we can solve for the divergence-free part U by simply rearranging our initial equation. Given our velocity from the diffusion step, W3, we can project it to determine its velocity-free counterpart, W4. Actually, if we perform the projection operator on the entire Navier-Stokes equation, we find that the pressure gradient dependence drops out. To summarize, we first add a force to the fluid to calculate W1. Then, we advect the fluid by tracing along the particle streamline to their previous location. The velocity at this previous location is equal to its current velocity. We then diffuse the velocity through the fluid. We note that over time, the velocity profile becomes uniform through weighted averages in proportion to the viscosity term. Lastly, we project the velocity field such that it is divergence-free to conserve mass. The velocity we get here is then fed back into the first step. I implemented all methods in Python within just over 500 lines of code, writing a graphical user interface in which users can visualize and interact with flow in a variety of different situations. I also enabled hardware acceleration to make it computationally efficient and a real-time simulation. Let's analyze some physically meaningful results from some of these situations. In the first scenario, we introduce a density source at the center that randomly shifts its angle within a small range every few steps, 
and visualize the resulting fluid flow over time. Observe how the fluid moves from high to low pressure, rising similarly to how smoke ascends from a cigarette or incense burner. Over time, we are also able to observe how flow transitions from a laminar, smooth, orderly, to a turbulent, chaotic, and irregular regime, with the angle variations becoming more pronounced in the low pressure region farther from the density source. When most people think of computational fluid dynamics, or CFD simulations, airfoils often come to mind. Companies like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and NASA invest millions in CFD simulations to design and optimize airfoil performance. In the following scenario, we add a horizontal density source and position an airfoil as a barrier. The resulting flow closely mimics what is observed when an airfoil is tested in a real wind tunnel. Notice how the fluid adheres to the contour of the airfoil along its length. On the top surface, the fluid flows faster than the bottom due to the narrowing effects near the airfoil's nose, known as the pinch point. This difference in velocity creates a pressure differential, lower pressure above the airfoil and higher pressure below. As previously discussed, fluid naturally moves from high to low pressure, generating a lift force that acts on the airfoil. An interesting phenomenon occurs when fluid flows past the cylinder. In our simulation, the model flow lines closely with the experimental observations. After some time and at a certain distance downstream from the cylinder, the fluid begins to oscillate at some specific frequency. This behavior, known as vortex shedding, can pose significant challenges in engineering. For example, you may have noticed unusual spirals or helical patterns on industrial chimneys. These are not decorative elements, but are intentionally designed to disrupt the formation of vortices as wind flows past the cylindrical structures. Without these features, the repeated vortex shedding could induce oscillations at the chimney's resonant frequency, potentially leading to structural failure and collapse. Beyond improving the aerodynamics of airplanes and cars, CFD simulations have a wide range of applications across various fields. Environmental scientists rely on CFD to model the dispersion of pollutant clouds in the atmosphere, helping to predict and mitigate their impact. Meteorologists use CFD as a core component in weather forecasting models, enabling more accurate predictions of weather patterns. In the biomedical field, scientists use CFD to simulate blood flow, allowing for the optimization of drug delivery systems and the design of medical devices such as stents and artificial heart valves. Perhaps one of the more surprising applications is in sports engineering. Engineers utilize CFD to design the dimple patterns on golf balls, enabling them to travel farther and with greater accuracy by minimizing drag and optimizing lift. If I were to revisit this project in the future, I would be eager to implement the numerical methods in C++ using its open graphics library, so to leverage the GPU for improved performance and visualization. Additionally, I would like to explore alternative fluid simulation techniques, such as the lattice Boltzmann method or particle-based approaches to compare their accuracy, efficiency, and scalability. Finally, incorporating features that allow users to draw their own barriers and customize various simulation parameters would greatly enhance interactivity and the overall user experience. All the code implemented in Python is in GitHub with the link in the description. The paper which I reference with the numerical methods is also in the description. If you made it this far, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to keep updated as I have some videos on machine learning which I plan to make shortly. If you can, please comment on what topics you would like to see or improvements that I can make to my videos. As always, thank you for watching.